So Halo 3 flight process on PC has just begun, but not without its own issues. In this video, we're gonna go over all the gameplay, UI, audio, and Forge bugs going into this to know what you guys can look out for and what you guys can report on for updates to help improve this game. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news information kind of video when it comes to everything Halo. Today we're talking about the known issues for Halo 3's flight process on PC. So if you like these news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it greatly helps out the video and channel keeps more people in the know to get a chance to stay up to date with everything going on in Halo. As stated at the top of this video, Halo 3 flighting on PC has just begun. I sunk a good amount of time into it, about four and a half hours into just playing the multiplayer and let me tell you guys, it feels great. And basically, you know, it just, if the game shipped like this, I don't think a lot of people would be upset to be honest. So if you guys want to jump in on this flight, it's not too late. Make sure you sign up for the Halo Insider program. Link in the description down below. Usually 343 does a second wave of invites. So if you sign up for that Insider program now, guys, you might have a chance to get in still if you haven't been invited yet. Also keep in mind, all the invites are now happening through the Halo Waypoint website. You're only getting a notification sometimes through email, but it's best to check your Halo Waypoint account to make sure you have your invite. Though there are some issues that need to be resolved before this launch. And this video, we're gonna go over the details. So let's get ready to the gameplay related issues. Again, these are the known issues as of June 11th. If you guys have your own issues that you've come across that are not in this known issues list, make sure to check out the link in the description down below to, to write your own ticket and make sure to read the known issues before submitting a ticket as well. So for gameplay, we have Elite Armor has some clipping issues on the customization preview screen. Stationary turrets can be moved on maps in multiplayer. Vehicles with fixed or phased physics can desync when piloted, Spartan laser reticle is larger than intended when zoomed in, visor HUD elements are misaligned in Halo 3 gameplay, medals are displayed for both unified and original when earned during multiplayer matches, the Arbiter's health bar has an unintentional line under it, the headshot reticle is slightly larger for the sniper rifle and battle rifle, the flashlight is not attached to the player's armor, and players' emblems on armor are randomized in gameplay. Now, I brought this up in my previous video, kind of showcasing all the customization that, yeah, like right now that when you switch up your elite armor sets, it kind of just phases between it itself, looking kind of weird, but honestly, it can look kind of cool if you just do it right. But yeah, that definitely needs to be fixed up, and I'm sure it will. And also, the, the, the uh, characters in the flight look really like low res and flat and no textures. Uh, again, we've had that previously with Halo 2 and Halo CE's flights, as well as also as actually as uh, Halo Reach's as well as they do display these models in the Unreal 4 engine, so the lighting and models might not transfer over one-to-one -one perfectly, and so I'm sure that will get taken care of for sure. I never noticed any of the vehicle desyncing. Of course, I only really played 4v4 multiplayers. So I didn't really come across that too much, but the vehicles I did play around with worked just fine. I did notice the Spartan laser reticle being a little larger when zoomed in. Again, that's not really exactly a big problem, but it could possibly affect right or radical range with that as well. With both medals displaying for multiplayer, we have experienced this before with previous flights, they get fixed in the release, so I wouldn't be too stressed out about that. Uh, I did notice that the uh, little reticle for your sniper rifle and battle rifle is a bit larger. If you guys know in Halo 3, they, once you line up a headshot, then there actually is a little red dot that pops up to let you know that you're lining up for a headshot and it's a little bit larger for some reason. Not too noticeable, but it's there if you guys are familiar with Halo 3. And this actually might be a bit of a bigger issue with player emblems on armor randomizing and gameplay. Obviously you want your customization to be shown in game, but if you guys are looking for like clips or you guys are trying to shoot machinimas or anything like that, Having that being randomized when you start a game can be extremely frustrating, ruining continuity between shots and just overall just losing that customization feel of your character certainly plays a factor. But I didn't notice anything with like the HUD elements like they mentioned, I didn't actually even notice that at all. The Arbiter's health bar, I didn't notice it either. And the flashlight not attached to armor, I didn't notice that either. Now for the UI or user interface part of this flight, there are some bugs going into this as well. Staying off here saying debug strings are present in challenges and customization screens with a dollar symbol. In-game text size is smaller than intended for player name, chapter title, and subtitles. The Spartan preview portrait does not update with selected armor. The visor preview is not accurate to in-game appearance. The fade in the HUD for Spartan's visor is not rendering correctly. Low ammo HUD does not fit for Spartan or Arbiter's 
edges on HUD for 21 by 9. The HUD's edges icon overlap on Arbiter's HUD. Some HUD elements are not centered in 21 by 9. Now, if you guys realize 21 by 9 is your standard widescreen format. So it actually is very important to make sure that your HUD is lined up properly and not looking messy or anything like that between. Uh, the text thing that they mentioned about the debug text with the challenges and customization, that's just a simple text thing that can be changed pretty easily and I'm sure it will be. And the Spartan uh, preview portrait and it's the preview visors and things like that, I, like I mentioned earlier, in the uh, customization preview don't actually look that great. They're not rendered properly. Again, like I said, we've had this in previous flights. This one I'm sure will also get fixed up by the time Halo 3 gets released on PC. Again, these HUD elements, I didn't really notice too much while playing the multiplayer the other night for about four hours. It seemed pretty good to my hand. So maybe it's just some people are experiencing this, but uh, I can understand how that could be rather frustrating or off-putting to see your HUD that you've seen so many hours of looking weird or off or just overlaid or not working properly. Next section here, we move on to audio. We're here where they're saying missing sound effects for flood dispersal pods landing in the mission Halo. Metal floor palettes play an incorrect sound effect on Heretic. Spartan voice customization does not save. Sound effects will sometimes be delayed or not play at all when multiple sounds are playing at the same time. During a cutscene and cinematic, the exit menu sound effect can play. And then finally, sound effects or doors opening in the mission Halo are incorrectly linked with, to the game music volume slider. Uh, these do sound a lot like campaign level kind of errors. Uh, I did watch a hidden experience stream where he played through the entire campaign that's available for the flight. And he only mentioned a couple bugs about saying like some weapons or some uh, vehicles not spawning in properly. He didn't really notice any of these kind of issues with the audio. So that's a good thing to notice that these are maybe more one-offs or more rare issues. Uh, they, I have also had this issue though, the Spartan voice customization not saving as well. So they gotta take that into consideration. And if sound effects not playing, I think this is kind of the overall MCC issue that I've noticed, especially like with Halo 2 Anniversary, that a lot of times a reload animation sound effect might not play properly or things like that might just kind of happen. MCC's audio encoder can be a bit wonky. That's why they're currently working on some audio fixes for Reach especially, which we haven't had any updates on recently, but as soon as we do guys, I'll let you know on this channel. And the lastly, we have some Forge known issues. I touched on these a little bit in my previous video, just discussing everything with this flighting process to kind of show you guys everything you need to know about it. So with Forge, they mentioned phase object physics are behaving like those with fixed physics. When using a gamepad, player is unable to exit object tools menu in Forge. While in monitor mode, players cannot thrust when holding an object in Forge. Objects move too much when precision edit key is being held. Well, it seems like a lot of these new features that have been brought into Forge are still kind of working on a little bit of the bugs, which uh, these can definitely be fixed. I've played around a little bit with Forge, as you saw, like I mentioned in my previous everything you need to know kind of video, and uh, it does work out pretty well. Like I said, like be not being to exit some menus, it's quite frustrating, but if you use the keyboard while using a controller, you can get out of that just fine. I would agree with the last one too, saying that using the precision edits key that uh, the objects move too much. I was messing around with that in my previous video, and it did seem like they were moving quite a bit for just like 0.1 increments. So, so that's one thing I, that I think you just need to tweak out a little bit and you'll probably be just fine on release. Again, guys, these are the known issues. Much like in Halo 2's flight, we had kind of similar issues, but then when, when the game actually released, we had a whole bunch of extra issues. I know 343 will certainly take the time to make sure Halo 3 releases properly as this is going to be the pinnacle of all the MCC PC releases. This is what the game is going to bring the most people back. It's going to have, be the game that has the most player retention as well. So you need a full game on release that doesn't have a crazy amount of bugs in it, which I trust 343 will do just that. So for my experience playing the multiplayer, that it's smooth. It's the best that Halo 3 has ever played. Guys, I would be super excited if you're looking to jump on to play this game on PC. It's gonna be a good time. If you guys like this video, make sure to tap that like button, leave a comment down below what your experience has been with the flight, if you've been able to play. If you guys want to know if there's any more invites coming out, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll make sure to get, let you guys know on this channel whenever we do get some more invites, which we normally do get a second wave of invites. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourself updated with everything going on in Halo. I got a link to all my playlists right over here if you missed any videos from me recently, the last few days or so, if you've been out of the loop. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.